I remember when I first read the novel and I was completely blown away by the central premise. Um, the, the gender reversal at the heart of it. You know, man as victim, women as perpetrators. I've run out of cigarettes. Well, what about the machine? Well, it's empty. Would you go and get me some? Based on the popular novel by Rupert Thompson, The Book of Revelation is a dark psychological drama about Daniel, played by Tom Long, a dancer who goes out one day to buy cigarettes and doesn't return. Twelve days later, Daniel reappears a broken man, having been incarcerated by three hooded women in a white room. The book was reviewed in the New York Times, and um, subsequent to that, um, I was living in Italy at the time, but when I got back to London, my film agent said there are 13 faxes about this book, you know, people who want to option it. Um, what do you want to do? <laughs> and, um, I mean, there was considerable Hollywood interest. There were the, the, the people, Lionsgate, the people who made American Psycho wanted to do it. The people who made The Matrix wanted to do it. There was a Dutch film company who wanted to do it. William Friedkin, who did The Exorcist, wanted to direct it. And um, in among all these faxes were, was a two-page letter from someone called Anna Kokinas. I was kind of really interested in the psychological dimensions of the story. And so in, in the adaptation, the challenge was how to take the spirit of what Rupert had written and transform that into a cinematic retelling of it. What do you want? No, this is. I think particularly what happens to Daniel in the White Room is primarily psychological, even though there is sexuality being explored as well. And because we're dealing with power relationships and because we are dealing with essentially a struggle, of, a battle of will between Daniel and these three women, then I think the sex takes on a completely different feeling. It's, it's not consensual sex. I don't want anything. It's only a dream. The women who are doing this to him, putting him through this, are kind of outside the, they're kind of outside the frame of the film, even as they were outside the novel. You know, you might say the big question is, why did they do it? You know, that's a that's a, a question the film doesn't answer, and it's a question the book didn't didn't answer. In a novel you can actually say a person walks into a room, but in film uh, not only does the person have to walk into the room, but generally speaking you know they have a name, they have a, they, the character has a name, what they're wearing uh, is immediately got to be tr uh, interpreted, uh, what room they're walking into has to be interpreted. So everything that's written on the page has to then be given some literal representation or some form of representation. As a screenwriter you're the camera looking at, at the characters and, and everything you've got to learn everything about it from, from that objective gaze, you know. As a novelist you're, you're right inside those characters, often you're inside looking out, you know, it's, it's, it's the exact opposite really. Every choice that you're making is constantly trying to be true to that original kind of inspiration that you got from the novel. It's easy to seduce an audience with sex. I want you to go beyond that. But you want us to dance without emotion? I want you to dance without ego. I'm always looking in stories for things that take us beyond the everyday and enable us to go into thinking about things on a, more, on a deeper level, on a more co complex level, kind of scratching the surface and going into other parts of ourselves.